thing that God showed me is that faith comes alive as you go deeper with God. And I think a lot of churches are scared to go deep because it might scare people off. And, and I found that to be the opposite. As you go deeper with God, your faith comes alive. The people that you pastor come alive. He taught much on the person of the Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, even taught on things of the supernatural. But my dad and I would... if he were here, he would, he would tell you, uh, we just didn't see a lot of those things happen. We, we had a context, we had a belief system for it, and if for any of you who know anything about the Methodist Church, you can't read a revival book without reading about John Wesley. Uh, you can't read one. It, it's, it's in our DNA. And so I would read some of Wesley's sermons, and I would read some of the things that happened in Wesley meetings, and I saw a disconnect between what I read about and what I was seeing. You know, Wesley in his journals would talk about people being on the floor, which I would, when I read that out of the current context, why are they on the floor? Why are, did they not have chairs? What, what are these people doing on the floor? And, uh, and he would talk in his journals about people shaking violently under the power and the fear of God till three o'clock in the morning. And he would talk about telling people that were gathered around to get out of the trees, thus they might fall out and die as he was speaking. And um, so a lot, of that, a lot of those things puzzled me, and it, it led me eventually into a, a search that would um, really shake a lot of things in my life. We, we planted our church after a, a season of being in business. I was in, I was in medical sales for 20 years. Uh, I had a call of God on my life at 13 to be a pastor. I was in an event, a youth event. I had... One of my first and only open vision at a conference, a youth conference, I saw myself on a platform speaking to people. I knew it was pastoral ministry, um, and I just knew that God was beckoning me and calling me unto that, and I ran from it because I didn't enjoy a lot of the things that my dad had to put up with. I, as, a, as a pastor's son, I was often witness to people complimenting my father and, and loving on my father to his face and then talking about him behind his back. Um, it, was, it was very hurtful, a lot of the things that I experienced growing up in the church. And I, I made a vow that I would never do that. Um, we, we grew up without a lot of things. My dad sacrificed much for the call of God in church. And selfishly, I wanted more. I wanted more money. I wanted, I wanted to pursue business. And so at the age of 20, I was given an opportunity to do that, and we were very successful early on. And, but that, that call at 13 never went away. And so God did a little bait and switch um, with me. He, he asked me to volunteer. Uh, he said, keep your job. That's fine. I want you to volunteer as a youth minister in your local church. At that time, the youth ministry was about 15 kids. I said, that's very manageable. I can do that. I'll love on these kids. We'll create some Bible studies. My wife and I created some environments just to disciple them and grow them, but it, it very quickly caught fire, and after three years of youth ministry, the youth ministry was larger than the church. There were over 220 kids coming, and, and that was just God's way of saying, um, I'm giving you a taste of what I'm calling you unto. And I really want you to do this full time. I really want you to quit your job and do this full time. And I said, fine, I'll do it as long as I can plan a church, knowing good and well that an opportunity to plan a church wouldn't come very quickly. Within a week, I received a phone call from the leaders of our denomination who, who really, and I'm not ordained, um, I, have a, I had a two-year bachelor's degree because at the time I was in medical sales when I was going to college at night and working during the day, um, I started making... I started making really good money and decided that I didn't need to continue. So my education consisted of a two-year bachelor's degree at a junior college. That's where I stopped, and our denomination did not empower at the time, did not empower pastors who did not have a master's of divinity. And so I knew that I had at least six years before I would get an opportunity to plant a church. So by telling God, yes, I'll do it, I knew in the back of my mind, very calculated, I've got at least six years. But then the bishop of our denomination called and said, I don't know why, but God has placed you on my heart. I want you to plant a church, and if you'll do it, 
I'll go around all of the red tape, and I will license you in a way that is legal but not common, and I can do it in three months. I was like, that, okay. So off we go. Uh, within six months, we had planted the church. It, uh, we, we had no formal training at all. The, the denomination was very generous. They gave us $150,000 and said, we can't train you because we don't know how to train you. So just go figure it out. Here's some money. Let us know how else we can help you. And so my wife and I began to read books that horrified us both about the failure rate within church plants, specifically umbrella um, drop church plants, parachute drop church plants. But we knew that God had been faithful along the way to give us all of these signs that he would be faithful to not only establish it, but to grow it. And he did. And so we, we, on day one, we were 200 people. Uh, and within a matter of a year, we were 400, and then we grew to 800, and then we grew to 1,200, and we just kept doubling year after year. We had far, uh, it, on, on day one, I was out of my comfort zone, out of my zone of experience. I was completely dependent upon the Lord to do absolutely everything. There was a church that we partnered with in Birmingham called Church of the Highlands. Church of the Highlands is a very large, uh, non-denominational, spirit-filled church that uh, probably they, they would say that, that their, their purpose is to reach the lost through attractional church model and church growth. I made great friendships with that church. They taught us a lot about systems and processes and how to, how to keep churches growing and moving. And I credit a lot to what happened at the beginning to what we learned from them. And I was completely content with this model of church. We had lots of numbers. We had many campuses. Finances had never been better. In 2017, we were at the pinnacle of, of everything that we had known to this point. We had just raised over $2 million to purchase a, a piece of property because we were out of space. Everything was going, everything that I had asked for and prayed for had happened. But yet, something was missing. There was something missing, and I knew something was missing. I was discontent. And so in January of 17, we entered into a season of praying and fasting. And it was while fasting, the Lord gave me a phrase. And I didn't know what to do with the phrase, but the phrase that he gave me for those 21 days was, there is more. He said, there is more. At that, at that point, I didn't know anything about there is more. I didn't know about the conference there is more. I didn't know about the book there is more. I didn't even know who Dr. Clark was. But he gave me this phrase, there is more. And at that point, I was like, yeah, I know, Lord. We're just getting started. We have three camps. We're going, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep, I, I know there's more. I'm excited. And he says, no, I'm speaking to you. There's more of me for you if you want more. Which that was kind of God's way of, of getting to me because he knows me. And he knows that I'm, I'm, I'm always going to go after more. Do you want another donut? Yes. Do you want more steak? Yes. Do you want more coffee? I've only had three cups. Yes. He knows my personality. If there is an offer for more on the table, then he has my attention. And he says, there's more of me to be had. Do you want more of me? I said, yes, I do. And he took me to a passage of scripture in that season. And I want you to turn there because I want to show you just how God spoke to me in that season, and then I'll get pretty practical. But it's in Ezekiel chapter 47. And in this passage, he gave me a picture of what his desire was for me as a follower of Christ, but also as a pastor who would lead others to come after him. And he had to start with me. And so if you're, if you're a pastor in the room, I really want to encourage you, before you even consider leading your church into the deeper things of God, you yourself have to be a person that goes after the deeper things of God. What Pastor Koulianis was talking about this morning, I, I just don't think it can be more accurate. This is what God is saying in this season. that He wants people to come after him. And just to be completely transparent, for the first six or seven years of our church, I was coming after him because I wanted him to bless my church. 
even in the quiet time, I would come after him because I wanted to see, I, my, my motives at the time I thought were pure. I wanted to see more people come to Christ. I wanted to see things grow. But, but even in my quiet time, I wasn't coming after him because I wanted him. I was coming after him because I wanted him to do things. And so he had to change my mindset. And so in this passage of Scripture, um, the, the thing that I, I figured out, the thing that God showed me is that faith comes alive as you go deeper with God. And I think a lot of churches are scared to go deep because it might scare people off. And, and I found that to be the opposite. As you go deeper with God, your faith comes alive. The people that you pastor come alive. There is a depth that he wants to take people into that we, were, we just weren't experiencing up to that point. And so just understand that when I do say deeper, I don't, I don't mean theologically deep or confusing because I think we use that word deep sometimes and we think in terms like it, it's not deep unless I leave confused. Deep to God is actually very simple. The deep things aren't difficult to understand. They are difficult to do, but they're not difficult to understand. So there are different levels. God told me there are different levels of my presence that I want you to experience, but I also want you to pastor people into these levels of my presence. And he said, let me show you a picture of what this looks like. So this, this, this picture comes in Ezekiel chapter 47. Um, in this chapter, God is showing the prophet a picture of a river. And this river begins in the temple, and from the temple it progresses, and as it progresses, it gets deeper. So let me read the passage to you. It starts in verse 1. This is Ezekiel talking. He says, In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see water flowing out through the south side of the eastern gate. Again, lots of stuff here, lots of instructions. Important thing to note is that there is a river. Measuring as he went, he took me along the river for 1,700 feet, or whatever your translation says in the measurement, could be cubits, 1,750 feet, and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles at this point. He took me down river, measured off another 1,750 feet, led me across again. This time, the water was up to my knees. Led me down river, another 1,750 feet. At this point in the river, it was up to my waist. Measured off another 1,750 feet. At this point, the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. So this man, let's, let's pause there, this man led the prophet into the temple, which is symbolic, the temple is symbolic of God. It is symbolic of his presence. And, and there, originating from God, originating from the person of God, came forth a river. But as the river progressed, it got deeper. So the temple was the starting point but at the temple, it was most shallow. From the temple outward, it got deeper and deeper and deeper. The river, water, is often, as you guys know, a metaphor of the presence of God or the Holy Spirit. And what God was showing Ezekiel is this is my intent for believers. I want them to progressively go deeper with me as they journey with me. I want them to start ankle deep. Yes, I think everyone needs to start ankle deep. But very quickly, we should progress from ankle deep waters to knee deep waters to hip deep waters to a place where we are now completely dependent upon God and swimming in his presence. This is God's desire for all believers. And fortunately, I had to do some self-reflection of the church that I led. We had a lot of people splashing around in ankle deep water. A lot of kids, a lot, a, lot, a lot of people were in the baby pool, not progressing down river, not progressing into the deeper things. And I, I think it's also a picture, honestly, of the American church. We have lots of people coming to church, but they're in ankle deep water. And one of the things that COVID exposed specifically in the American church is how shallow we actually are. 
with just a little bit of difficulty, with just a little bit of pressure and a little bit of persecution, over 40% of the American church is gone. They're gone. They're not watching online. Talk to pastors all the time. Yeah, we're not back yet, but most of them are watching online. They're not watching online. Quit looking at your Facebook numbers. Counting people on Facebook is like counting the cars that are passing by right now. Just because people scroll doesn't mean that they're engaged. Just because they liked you on a social media doesn't mean that they're engaged. So with just a little bit of pressure, 40% of the American church is gone, not to be found. And so the Lord told me, he says, you have a responsibility not just to gather crowds, but you have a responsibility to take people on a journey of going deeper with me. And that's going to start with you. Do you want more? That's what he asked me. Yes, Lord.